I don't see any questions this week, but I thought I would talk about the connection between thyroid health and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So many of you know the 14-day liver cleanse started today, actually. Um, and we have so many people who were interested and they weren't quite ready and they just weren't sure exactly how the liver is related to other conditions and why it's so important to cleanse. And so I've talked about the environmental factors and things like that. But sometimes we have underlying conditions that affect the liver, that they can create problems with the liver or the liver can create other problems as well. And so today I really wanted to talk about the thyroid and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So what is the liver? The liver is an organ here on the left-hand side. I don't know if the video is uh, turned. I'm on the left-hand side under the breast on top of those ribs. So underneath there, it crosses over about the middle of the other rib underneath there and goes and kind of wraps around under here. And so it's a, it's a pretty big organ and it processes um, everything that we eat. It cleans the blood. And so every, every we have these direct, um, I don't know what to call them, direct veins that go from the intestines straight to the liver. So that goes there first and then things get filtered, toxins get removed because we don't want any toxins to go to the heart. And so it filters it first before it can go anywhere else and throughout the body. And so it's like a the first place that everything needs to go. It's responsible for processing the foods and turning them into energy. And it also helps us to remove any harmful substances. And so one of the most common conditions that's one of the things that's growing the most right now is fatty liver disease. And so if we think about the liver, we want it to be nice and clean and healthy. Um, Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, we used to only hear about like liver disease and alcoholics, right? But now it's really growing in non-alcoholics and it's really growing in children. And it's too much fat starts to build up in the liver cells. And so this liver, you know, think it starts getting too fat. We have different things building up in here. And this, this is what happens when we eat unhealthy foods, when we eat foods that don't break down, that don't provide the right energy for our bodies. The first things that come to mind to me are things like sodas and crackers and cookies and anything with food dyes. All of those food dyes, those chemicals are going to have to be stopped and removed before the blood can move on, right? And so if we're eating something like, I don't want to use things, but those little red candies that are red and green and blue and yellow, and they have chocolate, milk chocolate, sugar inside, so that's not a food. What's going to happen is all those different dyes, they have to be filtered. That coating, did you know it has a special coating on top? You remember it didn't melt in your hand? Um, that coating also has to be removed. The sugar, the dairy, any other chemical inside has to be removed before it moves on. So when we eat a handful of those, think about all that. It's just going to clog up all the different things that are going on, right? If we add a soda on top of that that has lots of chemicals and high fructose corn syrup, I mean, we are just really building, 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 building. And then we're breathing bad air. We're really stuffing that liver with all sorts of things. And so today, in today's world, children are eating foods, breakfast, lunch, and dinner that have all these different colors, as well as drinking the water with the chemicals, breathing the air with the chemicals, using bath and body products that have those wonderful smells. I want to smell like strawberries. That is more chemicals. And so that's all leading to a buildup. So there's two kinds of fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We have the simple fatty liver disease, the liver has a buildup of fat. Um, and then there's NASH, which is where it gets fat, but it also gets swollen and damaged as well. So why does it matter? It can lead to serious health problems. It can lead to cirrhosis of the liver, which is irreversible. And we don't want that to happen, right? So who can get it? Like I said, even children, that's um, a really, that's where it's really growing right now. And so not only in adults, we're hearing more and more people, but really growing in our children. And it's from eating unhealthy foods. It's from not moving our bodies and exercising the bodies to help toxins move out. And it's carrying too much body weight. So how can we fix that? Eat healthier foods, eating whole foods, eat foods 
that are in the produce, produce department. And my husband said the last time, well, not the last time, but one of the last times he was in the grocery store, the um, cashier said she'd never seen anyone buy so many ingredients. And he looked at her and was like, ingredients? It's food. It was all produce, right? So if it's in the produce section, those are real whole foods. It's not in bags and boxes and things like that. So that's what we need to be eating. Less junk food, no food with colors. You know, if it has added colors out, added sugars out, we need to be drinking water. We need to teach children young to drink and enjoy water. And we need to stay active. Our bodies are meant to move. Children should be playing and running. And we hear about, you know, PE being shortened or reduced to one day a week and recreation time being taken away. They don't get to go play out on the playground. Children are made to move, but so are adults. If you watch the uh, Blue Zone series that's been on, one of the common themes among all of these centenarians was they get out and move, they garden, they squat. You know, how many people are 100 years old and can squat down and stand back up, right? Some of us in our 50s still can't squat down and stand up. And so we need to be moving our body, moving the blood, moving the lymph, helping toxins to be removed, and then drinking lots of water. Water, 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 water. Help flush things through. Flush it through the liver. Flush it through the kidneys. Flush it to through the um, bowels. We need to drink at least half our body weight in water. And so water is so, so important. And then getting it checked out, right? So like I said, it is one of the fastest growing um, conditions. We think of like, we used to think of liver disease as being in alcoholics, but it's it's not in alcoholics anymore. It's estimated that 25% of people worldwide have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is huge. So 25%, that's crazy. Um, something tricky about it is it doesn't really have any noticeable symptoms until it's kind of almost too late. So that means that you don't even know you have it unless you have going, you're going to a doctor who really looks at your liver enzymes. Um, a lot of people, they are living their life they don't really notice that they're feeling sick or things are off and they don't really experience anything strange until it's kind of far down the line. Um, and so that can make it really tricky. Um, and it's a reminder that we need to have blood work. Um, I come from the natural healing world where we don't do blood work, but I really am a strong believer in having an annual physical where you have the blood work and have it examined by a functional practitioner who looks at optimal numbers, not normal. You know, when you get a blood test back and you see those ranges, those ranges are what's normal in your area. So look at your population, population where you live, normal doesn't mean healthy. And so you want to make sure you get it reviewed by a functional practitioner. I do that. Um, I am more than happy to help you um, understand your labs in a functional perspective. And so feel free to contact me if that's something you would like for me to do. As a matter of fact, I will be taking clients through um, functional labs um, in the next coming um, next few months. And so I didn't even think about that until now. So not only is it something that can be really severe, um, it's something that we need to pay close attention to. I um, mean, it's closely connected to the thyroid, really? So people are like, wait, how is a thyroid related to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So your thyroid, for those of you who haven't been watching my last few videos, um, the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped organ here at the base of your neck here. And it is called the master gland. It produces different hormones. Um, it produces T4, which is an inactive hormone that gets converted by some of your organs, mostly the kidney and the liver, to create an active form of T3. And so it has, it doesn't work alone. It works with um, your brain. It works with your liver um, as well. And so um, it's really important because it affects your metabolism. Your thyroid hormone speeds up your metabolism. It can slow down your metabolism. It can help your cells take in more energy and burn more energy. And so people with an overactive thyroid, they can sometimes feel jittery and then they lose weight really quickly. While people with an underactive thyroid, and generally speaking, have fatigue and some weight gain. Now those symptoms can cross over. Some people can fluctuate between 
under and over. Um, it also regulates your body temperature. Um, it's your internal thermostat. Your thyroid hormones um, decide how well your body generates heat or expends heat, and it can affect whether or not you feel hot or cold. It's how your body adapts to changes in the weather. When I was um, sickest, I hated changes in, in temperature. Like my body just could not figure out, am I hot, am I cold? Um, it was miserable, right? And another thing a thyroid does is regulate your heart rate. And so it can speed up your heart rate or it can slow down your heart rate. And so when you have an underactive thyroid, it can slow down. The same with your digestion. It can speed up your digestion and it can speed up how well your body converts your foods into energy, or it can, which, or it can lead to frequent bowel movements, or if it's underactive, it can slow down your digestion and lead to constipation. It also can affect your brain cells. Um, so you need just the right amount of thyroid hormones for your brain to function. Too much or too little can affect your mood, um, your memory, and your cognitive abilities. And so your thyroid really affects so much, including growth and development, and including cholesterol, which involves the liver. It helps regulate your cholesterol levels. An underactive thyroid can elevate bad LDL, which you want low, L for low, LDL cholesterol, which can increase heart disease risk. And it's even involved, the thyroid is involved in maintaining muscle tone and controlling muscle movements. And an imbalance can lead to muscle weakness or stiffness. I used to call it my heavy legs. My legs would hurt and they would feel really heavy when I was sick. And it can contribute to healthy skin and hair. You can have hair, um, hair loss, dry skin, and changes in the texture of your hair and even your fingernails when it's imbalanced. And so how is that related to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Well, metabolic syndrome is kind of one of those words that's being thrown around. It is a cluster of different risk factors. It's related to heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, insulin resistance, and all of those things. And it can be connected to the liver the liver, remember, it's the master gland. It regulates metabolism. That's how it's all connected. Um, so there's a deep connection between non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and metabolic syndrome. Um, and insulin resistance is a key player. When your cells don't respond efficiently to insulin, um, which is what we need to get the sugar into the cells for energy, that can trigger to a whole nother stream of conditions. And it can also accumulate sugar and fat in the liver. Like I said, remember sodas and things like that. Other things that can contribute are excess fat, especially around the abdomen. That's a common factor for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and metabolic syndrome. Um, so this tissue produces inflammation and inflammation can lead to insulin resistance, Insulin resistance leads to inflammation and fat accumulation in the liver. High blood pressure. Hypertension is also a part of metabolic syndrome, and it can lead to liver damage, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, elevated blood sugar like insulin resistance is another hallmark of metabolic syndrome and is associated to the more severe forms of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and abnormal lipid profiles or high cholesterol can also include things like elevated triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol. H is H. We want high. That's the good cholesterol. And when we have dyslipidemia, we have the wrong way. We, our low is high and our high is low. And so that can lead to liver inflammation and contribute to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, so metabolic syndrome and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease increase the chance of heart disease, the number one killer of Americans. And this can lead to atherosclerosis, heart attacks, and strokes. Um, insulin resistance, the key player in metabolic syndrome, 
can lead to type 2 diabetes, which is another risk factor for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And metabolic syndrome related factors like obesity and insulin resistance promote non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and even liver cancer. And then kidney disease. So the relationship between these can also lead to kidney damage. Um, uh, metabolic syndrome can cause kidney dysfunction, which can also advance non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, leading to problems with the kidneys and the liver. Um, so non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and hypothyroidism, um, they both seem like they are different conditions, yet research is coming out showing that they are very much connected. And so if you have been told you have problems with your liver, you need to have a full thyroid panel. And if you know you have something going on with your thyroid, you need to have all of your liver enzymes checked and have an examine, you know, see what is going on in your body. Get to the root. Why do you have insulin resistance? Why do you have your thyroid imbalance? Why are your liver enzymes elevated? Um, so like I said, multiple studies have been showing there's a strong link between hypothyroidism and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and fat accumulation in the liver. Um, research findings show that prevalence ranges anywhere from 15% to 36%, depending on what you are looking at. Um, so this means that there's definitely a connection here involving metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, abnormal lipid metabolism, that's cholesterol, and inflammation. So hypothyroidism is inflammation, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is inflammation. We have to get the inflammation under control. And then hormone regulation. So the thyroid is a part of the HPTA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis, um, which is influenced by stress. And so making sure that we're taking time throughout the day to rest and relax. I'm trying, aiming for five times a day to take a breath, um, to slow down, to really think about your day. If you can just pause and focus on breathing and relax before a meal and you eat three meals, that's three times right there. So you just need to find maybe when you wake up and maybe before you go to bed, that would be five times a day. But letting your body know that it is safe, that you don't have to be in survival mode is key in helping the HP. TA axis, the hypothalamus, thyroid, pituitary, all of them know that you are safe and things can run smoothly. Also avoiding environmental toxins and also doing things like a liver cleanse, which I do in the spring and in the fall, just because I'm exposed to so many chemicals in my world. And so if this is something that really speaks to you, something that you want more information on, um, please comment or you can DM me. Um, I just, I want to hear from you. I want to make sure that the information I'm providing is serving you and helping you. And if you would like someone to review your labs in a functional lens, then please comment or DM me that as well. So I hope that you have a fabulous week. Our time is up for today. I didn't see any questions in the group, but if you have a topic you would like to talk about next week, please let me know. You know, I love to hear from you. So have a great week. Thank you.